Passion can sometimes get the best of you. Like the desire to head off on a solo canoe trip late in the season, despite forecasts of extreme weather. But the lure of another adventure on an unknown stretch of waterway was more than I could resist. Near the end of October, I headed back to Harris Lake. I paddled the north branch of the Harris River at the beginning of summer with a friend and found much to love about it. So naturally, I was just as curious to see the south branch. So here I was on a solo pilgrimage. Just as I arrived, it started to rain so I quickly put on my dry suit. There was 25 millimeters of rain forecasted, and with the prospect of being in the water with river travel in the following days, I opted to wear a dry suit for this trip. I headed to the east end of Harris Lake, where I would camp for the first night. It would be a short day due to the late start and to prepare for the coming storm, so I relished the peaceful paddle and enjoyed the sights and sounds along the way. As I continued paddling, I noticed something in the water and turned around to see what it was. It was so relaxing and peaceful to paddle along the misty shore, so I was grateful the storm hadn't started as yet. I eventually arrived at a narrow point where I planned to make camp for the night. While trying to locate a spot to set up my tarp and hammock, the thunder started and the rain began. I was happy to be off the water, but unfortunately wasn't able to set up camp before the storm. The 
rain came in waves, oftentimes strong and sustained, but then it would let off. It was in the lulls where I scrambled to set up my two tarps in my hammock. The heavy rains finally ended late in the afternoon. Luckily I was able to gather firewood and create a fire pit which would be a welcome relief as company and warmth as the night approached and temperatures dropped. Supper was next on the agenda. A simple chili and rice dish together with hot chocolate. I had planned to relax and read a book by the fire but the wind suddenly kicked up and drove rain sideways. This was my cue to head to bed early. Sleep came in spurts that night. With the howl of the wind and the rattling hammock, I wasn't surprised to hear there was tornado warnings that evening. It wasn't the smartest decision to set up camp by shore.
Despite the rough night, it was good to be on the water again, as I made my way back on Harris Lake towards the river. At the end of the lake, I found the split and made my way towards the south branch. I immediately knew I was approaching a drop as I could hear the roar from a distance, so I approached cautiously to make sure I could pull out in time. It was nice seeing the falls, but now I would be approaching a wide marsh. With high water levels, I wasn't expecting any issues getting through. Well, at least that's what I thought. Log jams, narrow channels, dead ends, and beaver dams. So much for smooth sailing. But the high water did help, and I managed to get through in decent time as the flow was surprisingly strong. I eventually made it to the end of the marsh, and then came upon my next obstacle. A long series of big rapids where a torrent of water rushed through a narrow valley. It was the type that got my heart thumping as I reveled at the thought of running it, but it was too risky, especially being solo, so it ended up being one long carry. There was no portage, nor any signs of anyone passing through this area. The rest of the south branch was an easy paddle, other than the one big down tree. Then it was on to the north branch. I originally planned to camp at the falls at the junction, but was concerned of the possible challenges going against the current on the last day, 
so I decided to continue up the north branch before making camp. Because the north branch of the Harris River is wider, my concerns were not warranted, but it didn't mean there wasn't any other challenges. I eventually arrived at a small set of cascading falls further up the river. This was where I decided I would camp for the night. While there was still light, I decided to check out the falls from the cliff before looking for camp on the other side. With the light fading, I quickly pedaled to the other side and found a suitable place to camp. Then I made a fire in a nice protected cove where I had supper by the falls. Then it was an early night to try and make up for the lack of sleep I got the previous night. Despite the roar from the falls, I had a good sleep and felt great in the morning. With no rush to set out first thing, I took the time to enjoy my surroundings. Then, it was time to get the day started.
I eventually arrived at the last major obstacle before Harris Lake, which were these beautiful falls. I was finally on Harris Lake, and it wasn't long before I pulled up to the access point. It was a cold, wet canoe trip, where I didn't even get to see the sun once, but I thoroughly enjoyed the time out on my own, and most of all, explore and experience another relatively wild river. It was just what I needed.